So welcome to the famous Magic Circle in London. And of course, it's customary in the Magic Circle not to divulge the tricks of the trade. But this morning, I'm going to be divulging some tricks of the trade when it comes to customer experience and branding. I'm going to be sharing with you some of the lessons learned from some of the best uh, brands in the world, particularly those that have really thrived in the recession. Uh, we spent three years researching some of these brands, and I'm going to be giving you some of the tricks. Well, customer experience is whatever the customer perceives it to be. So every point that an organization touches the customer um, is the customer experience. And to that extent, it's different from customer service because we think about customer service as those things that happen between the service provider and the customer. But of course, now in today's multi-channel age, digital age, many times we don't even see uh, a customer service provider. It's all about the, the channel. And so at the end of the day, it comes down to the nature of the relationship between the customer and the brand or the customer and the person uh, that really determines the, the extent to which the customer is going to be delighted or not with the service they get. It's about knowing what you stand for as a brand, what's your positioning, what do you promise, um, being intentional about delivering that every single day uh, across all of your, your touch points with the customers. And then thirdly, measuring to make sure that you have high levels of customer advocacy so that you keep those important customers coming back. In the research that we did for my book, Bold, How to Be Brave in Business and Win, where we looked at those brands that are transforming the markets, that are really making a difference, we found that they have three things in common. There are many, but there are three big ones. The first is they stand up for something. They have a clear sense of who they are as a brand, what they stand for, their purpose. And increasingly, what we're finding is that consumers are preferring to give their business to those brands with whom they identify at a values level, those brands that they feel contribute something to uh, society and to, and to customers. So it's a purpose beyond profit. The second thing they do is they stand out. So they differentiate from their competitors in some uh, way or form, and in a way which is, is of value to the target customers. So they are distinctly different. So if you think of brands like Virgin, for example, Virgin Atlantic, um, if you think of brands like Innocent in the, uh, the smoothie maker, if you think of brands like Burberry, um, these, are, these are organizations that really stand out in a distinctive way. And the third thing they do is they stand firm. And by that I mean they create a culture that sustains them uh, over many years. They create a, a culture, a very strong culture, a DNA for that organization. John Lewis is an example of that, Marks and Spencer's is another, um, which uh, enables them to, to sustain that performance over many years and evolve uh, over that same period of time. So stand up, stand out, and stand firm.